Welcome back to our discussion of uh, ACCA paper P4, Advanced Financial Management. Now, the uh, section on advanced investment appraisal is really the guts of the paper. It's really uh, a central core of this uh, syllabus, and therefore we have to make sure that we uh, are in completely in control of the different uh, concepts which are um, mentioned here. Now, a lot of it actually does come from paper F9, so F9 is assumed knowledge. So the whole uh, mathematical um, uh, task of discounting uh, cash flows should be well uh, familiar to, to everybody. Uh, the concept of measuring free cash flows, these would be uh, cash flows generated from period to period uh, for or a, a destined for the uh, capital providers. Capital providers we understand to be both debt and equity. So we're looking at the uh, a project's ability to, de to create or, or generate surplus cash flows, which will go to those people who are financing free cash flow. And we're looking for relevant cash flows because when we appraise projects, we have to use uh, we have to identify and measure the relevant cash flows in order to come to a uh, valid conclusion as to whether a project is worth doing or not. One may also recall from paper F9 that the uh, free cash flow uh, may also have an inflation factor in it, and therefore we may be uh, inflating the cash flows to arrive at nominal or money cash flows, and these may very well be the basis on which we will uh, do the discounting. Remember, it's nominal cash flows which are discounted at a nominal discount rate R. If we have cash flows which are expressed in real terms, then we would have to take our real cash flows and discount them at a real discount rate. And the real discount rate's re, uh, relationship to the nominal rate is reflected in the Fisher formula. And if you want to put this formula to use in the example presented here, then we would take a nominal interest rate of 8% and inflation running at 6% then the real rate is going to be 1.88%. If you divided 1.08 by 1.06, then you would have gotten the right answer. Uh, remember, in the cash flows here, taxation also plays a role, so we need to make sure that we can um, calculate the right tax on the cash flows. Um, particularly when we have a written down allowance and tax relief uh, connected to the asset that's being uh, invested in. And uh, therefore, there's a great deal of detail necessary and care that has to go into constructing good cash flows prior to discounting. Now, there's a, the free cash flow definition we used above was free cash flow to capital. This would be to uh, all capital providers. It's, it is all conceptually equivalent to taking the free cash flow to equity alone and discounting it at the cost of equity. That should give us the same uh, answer conceptually as a discounting of the free cash flows to all capital providers by the weighted average cost of equity capital. And here you see a whack calculation at the bottom of the page. The rest is detail here in terms of uh, how one would uh, derive free cash flow to equity. However, this is not really a recommended method. One should just know about it and, and uh, be aware that it exists. Uh, now, again, this is paper um, uh, F9 introduces the idea of internal rate of return, and paper P4 takes the story forward and introduces modified internal rate of return. The model, modified rate of internal rate of return 
um, does the following. It looks at, the, uh, at one of the features of the IRR, which says that the interim cash flows are reinvested at the IRR rate. You can see here that the uh, cash flow of 5,000 in year one in this uh, two, two period um, uh, set of cash flows, uh, if it's restated, if it were to be restated as a, uh, as a period two cash flow, it would be reinvested at the IRR rate of 35.61%. And therefore, we can say that the IRR of cash flow A is the same as the IRR of cash flow B. Now the modification of cash flow comes in to play in the following way. It says that interim cash flows uh, should not be considered to be reinvestable at the IRR rate, but should be reinvested at the cost of capital rate of the company. And if the cost of capital rate is less than the IRR rate for a given set of cash flows, then the modified internal rate of return will, in fact, be lower. So in this way, one can see that if for the cash flows that we mentioned above, cash flow A with the 5,000 payout in year one, the if the company that's analyzing these cash flows says that they have a cost of capital of 12%, then it means, practically speaking, these 5,000 cannot be reinvested at the IRR rate of the cash flows, which is 36 point, sorry, 35.61%, but this 5,000 would be reinvestable at the 12% cost of capital. And therefore, we would end up with a modified uh, internal rate of return of 33.42%, which we can see is a little bit lower than the 35.61% originally calculated. Now, uh, investment uh, analysis and investment appraisal also involves doing simulations in order to uh, see what would happen under different probabilities of uh, the project not being feasible, so the Monte Carlo simulation uses the probability distributions. And normal probability distributions are also used when we do value at risk. Value at risk is a method by which we um, uh, specify uh, for a given uh, level of prob probability called the confidence level, we may wish to know what the chances are, the probability of a portfolio of investments, for example, falling below a certain level. So the question asked is, if you have a portfolio of investments, for example, um, that have an expected value of 50 million, what's the probability that the value could drop to 40 million? You could work out based on normal distributions what the probability is. You could look at it the other way around and say, what level of value would correspond to a 5% chance of occurrence. This means that with a 95% probability, the portfolio could drop to what lowest possible level with a 95% probability. It just gives us uh, boundary lines and allows management to be able to uh, imagine what the potential losses could be uh, for a given uh, position uh, and attaching probabilities to the levels of loss. Now, very central to uh, paper P4 is also the idea of options. Options are also uh, introduced in paper F9 in the basic form, the distinction between put options and call options. One has here um, examples of the two. And now paper P4 goes beyond and to the highest level with regard to options theory and looks at the Black-Scholes options pricing model. Now this model is um, probably the most uh, complicated model or one of the most complicated models uh, used in, uh, in finance and therefore it's beyond uh, the few minutes that we have now for discussion to go through the details of the model. But as you go through the, uh, your detailed notes, be sure to identify the five major components of the that are required
for calculating options prices. There are five in number. They're enumerated here. And the formula itself, the option value, the Black-Scholes gives us the price of a call option provided we know the various inputs. So we have to take a dynamic uh, approach to identifying the different parts of the Black-Scholes uh, variables to know what they mean, where they come from, how we put them into the model, and of course we need to have a good calculator to be able to do the calculations that are necessary. For review purposes, one can see here uh, to develop an intuitive grasp of options is very important. It allows you to um, to check your work based on common sense and see if the result uh, looks right. That's a huge, huge um, advantage in an exam to be able to look at a situation and cal make complex calculations and be able to say, does the answer look right? And sometimes it's possible to identify that a mistake has been made. Distinction between European style and American style options uh, are mentioned as well. In other words, an option is op exercisable only at expiry date. That would be the definition of a European style option. Next time we're going to discuss the use of options as applied to real projects. So stay in this um, chapter and till next time.